What better way to capture those unforgettable memories than with a Nikon? The Nikon Z6 II at San Jose Camera pushes the limits of your creativity with a 24.5 megapixel sensor to produce detailed images and lifelike 4K UHD video. The Nikon Z6 II has the power of dual processors and two card slots. If you want expert advice, let San Jose Camera show you the way to create your most memorable photos and videos ever with a Nikon Z6 II. To learn more, visit us at sanjosecamera.com or come see us at 1600 Winchester Boulevard in Campbell. Nikon Inc. Limited warranty included. All right, it is Sunday baseball. Giants and Padres coming up as uh, we'll see Mackenzie Gore going for the Padres, a young left-hander, and Alex Wood for the Giants as the Giants try to break this uh, losing streak and get a game here in this three-game series against the Padres. Well, a pleasure to go back east and bring in Mark Sanchez. And, of course, we enjoyed working with Mark when he was at KNBR.com, he did a great job. He's now back east with the New York Post covering baseball. Mark Sanchez, it's great to have you with us. How are you? I'm doing well. Marty, I've, uh, I've missed talking ball with you. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. And, you know, we're at the quarter mark of the season now. And, uh, you know, we start to evaluate what's going on in a baseball season. But first of all, tell us about the New York Post and what you're doing there. New York baseball, my goodness, uh, pretty exciting. I am doing a lot here, I guess, is the uh, is the short answer there. Uh, right. I'm, I'm either at the Yankees games or Mets games or uh, Jets games or Giants games or occasional Rangers games, which has been a, a nightmare as I kind of try to pretend I know hockey. Uh, really, anything that, that comes up, uh, I'm, I'm general assignment over here. Uh, so I'm uh, I, whatever they need that day, I'm, I'm doing. But recently, it's been a, a whole lot of Mets coverage, which uh, which you Giants fans should see starting tomorrow and that'll, and that'll be good but oh, we uh, do. go ahead it's please. been a lot it's been, no no it's been fun it's been fun no it's great uh you know to be part of new york baseball and uh when things are going well it's pretty exciting that back page is always interesting to see who's going to get the back page but let's talk mets because the mets are coming in here tomorrow for three they're off to a great start they've got the game in colorado today with taiwan walker going uh against gomber today and then we get the met team coming in here with no Scherzer, no McGill, but a team that's still winning. So tell us about the Mets. What's going on? It it reminds me a little bit of last year's Giants, Uh, not in terms of of how they play, but in terms of the way they get their wins, where last year the the Giants kept seeming to uh, to lose guy after guy, and it didn't matter because they would just plug in someone else, and and they would rely on their depth more than anything. the, that is what the Mets have been doing, and they've got a deep lineup, and they have had to test their their rotation depth early, and the rotation depth actually has, has been very good. You're going to see David Peterson tomorrow, who was not in the rotation to, to break the season, um, but they have needed him in the rotation pretty much the whole year, and the former first-round pick who's, who's been very good. Uh, and, and the way they win the games, too, it's you know I, I think I, I'm pretty sure the stat is that they have the best OPS when they are losing in the league, uh, that they have so many comeback wins because in the seventh and eighth and ninth innings, that's when their their bats really come alive. And when you combine that with you know Edwin Diaz, their closer, who's been great, and I think he's only got one blown save. They, they've had so many big ninth inning rallies. Uh, they posted seven runs in, in the ninth inning a couple of weeks back to to knock off, I believe, the Phillies. Uh, They have a whole lot of those wins and not many of those bad losses. So in in a lot of ways, it reminds me of last year's Giants where uh, it's it's a fun team to root for just in the way that if it's not one guy, it's always someone else. Well, Pete Alonso is the guy, and of course we see him in the Home Run Derby and he's got that swing. He's from the University of Florida, which I like. But Pete Alonso looks like the guy. Uh, when it's happening with Pete Alonso, this lineup looks a lot different. Lindor is doing a good job, and he's got some better numbers this year. But for me, uh, when Alonso is on, this team becomes very dangerous. And look, they took three or four from the Giants earlier uh, back at the, the ballpark in New York. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this year we're seeing that with, with the Yankees, too, we're really separating the actual home run hitters from the rest of the pack. Uh, and, you know, it's no longer, you know, 175-pound second baseman can go and, and hit 30 home runs. I think the, the deadening of the ball is kind of mm. uh, playing a part in that. Uh, and with the Yankees, where you've got, you know, Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge are able to separate themselves, that's what Pete Alonso is doing too. 
where, you know, he's already got 10 home runs. He is the leader of the Mets. He has played every game. Uh, he's already said he wants to play 162. He is that kind of leader who wants to be there every day. Uh, and they're DHing him more this year because they can. And he's even said, like, you know, I will do that because you're asking me to, but I want to play first base. He wants to be out there every day. He's actually gotten a lot better at, at first base over the past couple of years. Uh, he is in a lot of ways, the guy that the Mets can't lose. Um, and they haven't lost him. They've lost Scherzer. They've lost the Grom. Uh, their, their pitching has still been fine. They have not lost Pete. And he's, he is really the leader of the team. Well, McGill is out too. And, uh, we'll see Bassett and Pena, Felix Pena, I think is listed for Wednesday. Uh, that's how the rotation has, has come apart for the Mets. But when you look at, uh, the Mets, you think of Lindor. Number one. But before you get to Lindor, you know, you read the speculation. And, of course, you're in the middle of it in New York baseball. The, the Mets are named now as a as a suitor for uh, Castillo, for Mali of the Reds, uh, for all these different pitchers. Do you see them making a deal? Because who knows when DeGrom will ever be back? <clears throat> and who knows what Scherzer's condition will be uh, when he does get back? I think they are maybe one injury or one underperformance away from making a deal. Um, and I, and I, it hasn't been announced, but I suspect Wednesday they're probably either starting or going bulk innings with uh, Thomas Zabuki, who is uh, in AAA right now, but he was pulled from his last start. It seems like they're uh, lining up for him to, to get a start there. A former top prospect who's uh, had injuries, but he's going to get his chance. Uh, they're you know, their very depth of the rotation has been tested and everyone has stepped up so far, but I think it's his turn now. And if he doesn't come through or if, you know, another injury strikes, I think that's when they need to go and, and hit the trade market and bring in another pitcher. And, mm. you know, what they, what they have shown is in DFA and Robinson Cano is that they will go all out to win this year. Uh, that kind of move, not many owners do, that early in the season to say, yeah, I'll eat that 40 million. It's no big deal. Um, that to, for him, for Steve Cohen to make that statement, I think says, I'm going to try to plug every hole and put the best uh, roster on the field every single day. So I don't think that they would go too far along with, you know, a, a struggling number five without trying to plug in someone, um, you know, go on the trade market and, and get someone better, even if it's someone more expensive. All right, Mark Sanchez with us. Boy, it's good to talk ball with you again. And, of course, writing for the New York Post now, formerly with KMBR, KMBR KMBR.com. You look at the Mets and you look at that division. I mean, they've got a nice lead. The Phillies are getting beat again today by the Dodgers. Uh, The Braves and Marlins kind of can't get out of each other's way. Uh, Washington is a disaster. The division is pretty much there for the Mets, and maybe Steve Cohen will do a George Steinbrenner and do whatever he can to to get enough players to win this division because the competition doesn't seem that strong. Right now it doesn't, although I think they are wary of the Braves. This was pretty much how the Braves were last year, and uh, the Braves made some moves. Uh, the Braves got, got healthy, and suddenly uh, you know, they were on their way to a championship. I think that's, that's their big concern there. Um, the Phillies never can get out of their own way, as, as you said, and their bullpen has just been awful and, and blown so many games, including against the Mets. Uh, but I, I think that that's their concern is when is Atlanta going to wake up and when are they going to come for us? And right now I think they're, they're seven games up. They're, right now they can withstand losing Scherzer. They can be patient with DeGrom and not you know rush him back and have him strength, or, or strengthen up and, and build up in the major leagues. They can say, you know, make your four or five rehab starts and then get here when you can throw a hundred pitches. And I think they've been very fortunate that the rest of the division has allowed them this patience. Um, but I, I do think that they've got their eyes on the Braves and saying, when are, when are these guys going to come for us? Okay. All right. We'll watch that and see how that develops. Let's uh, touch on the Yankees as we have another minute or two here with uh, Mark Sanchez, Aaron judge, just uh, unbelievable. He rolled the dice. It was offered a tremendous amount of money, said no, and he rolled the dice. Do you see him being a Yankee uh, in the future, or will he go somewhere else? Yeah, that is the, uh, I don't know, the, the $400 million question. Yeah, that's, uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think it's going to be up to Aaron Judge, and I don't think that anyone or many people outside of Aaron Judge know. Uh, 
the Yankees have kind of, at this point, they gave them a, a fair contract or what they believe is a fair contract offer. Uh, judges can't think that they can go more, especially because of, you know, the, the judges chambers and how much money the Yankees make on his name. It's, it's a whole lot of money. Um, but he's, I think, 30 years old. He's getting up there when you're giving him, you know, eight, nine years. That's a real commitment. Um, and I, I think that because he has been so good this year and really, you know, he might be the MVP of the AL. Um, I think he is saying, I am going to command more money and the Yankees probably will have to give him more money. The question is going to be whether he actually wants to be in New York. And uh, I, I'm sure that, that can be our listeners. know he's, he's from that area. He's he grew up a Giants fan. He could, if he wants to be somewhere else, if he wants to be in Northern California, uh, I think we'll find out in, in the off season, but it does seem like he's not going to commit to the Yankees before he can be a free agent. And, and I think that's when, we're all going to know whether he actually enjoys being a Yankee or whether, you know, the very many uh, bad things that go, go along with being in New York and having every step, uh, you know, if he goes over four, he gets written about in the papers and <laughs> what's wrong with Aaron judge. There is a, a huge microscope on him here that, you know, if you really go anywhere else. Uh, it's not, it's lessened quite a bit. Uh, he will never hear a boo anywhere else. But if he's in a slump, he will hear boos at Yankee Stadium. That's just the way the fans are. Uh, so I, I think that he will hit free agency. He's, well, he has said he was disappointed. He didn't uh, re-up before the season started, and now he won't talk with the Yankees again until after the season has ended. Uh, and I think that's when we're going to really know whether he enjoys being a Yankee or not. Boy, great analysis. Boy, a million stories in the naked city, the asphalt jungle, New York, baseball. Mark, you're, you landed in a good spot, and uh, we love having you on, and we'll catch up with you again. A pleasure. Good report on New York baseball. Always good to talk with you. Thank you, Marty. All right, that is Mark Sanchez. What a pleasure. All right, more coming up. Bill will chat with Adam Copeland next right here on The Sports Leader. Stacking Benjamins with Joe and his good friend OG not only has great financial insight, it's laid back with humor too. Joe and his gang. It probably means you are going to have to cut out one of those more discretionary big things because you're still buying gas. You're still buying groceries. Mm-hmm. Those things that are, we can't, we maybe buy one gallon less milk and for the most water part. Water it down, drink half of it and then fill it back with water. Who doesn't do that? There's like 1% milk and 2%. Milk. <laughs> I grew up with quarter percent milk. <laughs> Stacking Benjamins. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.